They just breathe more fiat billions into it. But here's the thing. If, if in fact, Coca-Cola, which is a, um, I believe now it's roughly a 50 or 60 billion, or maybe a higher billion dollar company, its biggest shareholder is Warren Buffett. And um, it's clearly an icon. It's global. It's a global currency, like the yen, the dollar, gold. Coca-Cola is sold everywhere. Somali pirates deal in Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola is the only currency in Somalia. Did you know that? That the tankers off the Somali coast that have Coke syrup, their major distribution point in Africa, it's, that's the central bank of Somalia, is Coke syrup. And it's the world's cheapest. It's the poor man's gold. Now, if you can boycott Coca-Cola products to the point where that stock goes to zero, Believe me, you're going to get people's attention. People are going to be frightened of you instead of you having to be frightened of them because it shows them that the power has shifted from the, the way that they do business. So it's like Washington are. winning at Trenton. It was a minor battle, but it showed we could win. Well, first of all, yeah, okay, I'll go with that, but it's not a minor battle. It's a pretty significant, it's a, it's a Dow Jones stock. It's, it's an icon. It's owned by Warren Buffett. It's easy to do. It's, a, it's like uh, Gandhi's march to the sea to make salt. It's, it's a boycott. It's easy to do. It's no cross weapon of choice. And you can tell every single day if you're winning or not. Just look at the price of Coke. If it's going down, you're winning. If it's going up, you're losing. If you take down Coke to zero, then you can move on. Move on to another company. And you've got a mobile feast of a boycotting army that's going to withdraw their consumer dollar, and they're going to take these stocks down to zero. When you take the stocks down to zero, the, everyone working at that company and the executive board is going to get nothing. Stay there. He's got a break. Stay there. Look, it's like Bernie Madoff or Ken Lay. They've all committed crimes. Just arrest them. We've got to extricate ourselves out of this. And if the public was as informed about fractional reserve banking and derivatives as they were about basketball or football, we wouldn't be in this situation. We're just talking to Max Kaiser. He says it's all going to implode when they steal everything. And, you know, there's a method to their madness, though. They plan to replace that with an eco-fascism, uh, you know, neo-feudalistic uh, system, Max Kaiser. Yeah. Is that a question? It's a statement, but, yeah, I mean, you can comment on it. <laughs> Well, you know, as I, on the break, I pointed your attention to, to an article that was written a few years ago when I launched this Coca-Cola boycott. Because what happens is, if enough people start boycotting Coke, you draw the attention of these hedge funds who then start selling short Coke on the behalf of the boycott. Because remember, they don't care who they're working for. They just want to make a quick buck. If you can leverage the hedge fund community to do the work of you, the humble boycotter, you've turbocharged your boycott. So instead of now having a few uh, hundred thousand people boycotting Coke, and it might have the impact of subtracting uh, 20 or $30 million from their market capitalization, you're now attracting the hedge funds who are going to subtract 10 or $20 billion from their market capitalization. And the hedge will keep shorting as long as you keep uh, building your boycott. And then it, it becomes then it, this uh, self-feeding uh, frenzy. Snowballs. You're using the tools that are being used against us. You're sticking it right in their face. And you're saying, here, eat this. And you're taking them down to zero. And you're saying, well, here's a scalp for us. We're going to win one. You're a loser. Okay? That's what I'm saying, Alex. You, you can inform people all day long. You can make them aware of the problem all day long. But we need to have a win in the win column. We need a scalp. We need to have a win here. We just can't be talking now for the next five years because there's going to be nothing left. I agree with you, and I think that's a good plan. I also think grand juries should start indicting these people. Bernie Madoff founded the NASDAQ, but he wasn't invincible. We can bring these criminals down by also exposing their criminality and their financial terrorism, which you've done a good job of uh, doing, Max. Jeff in Missouri, you're on the air with Max Kaiser. Go ahead. Good day, gentlemen. Uh, i got two questions. Um, first of all, uh, Mr. Kaiser, uh, can you explain how these um, SDRs are going to uh, replace the dollar? Uh, I know I'm a little bit familiar about SDRs. They've been around for a while, but exactly what are they? And also my second question is, um, is there any way you can get an article printed up that we can hand out to other people on a step-by-step -step, um, what happened last week, uh, last Thursday. When I've got I, uh, Paul Watson on. writing an article right now about what Max said earlier in the hour. You can also go to MaxKaiser.com. He's got info on it there. But answer that first question, Max. Right. So an SDR is 
you know, another fiat currency. It doesn't take anything to create a, a fiat currency. You simply say, here is a basket, a unit, a measurement, an accounting unit. It's going to be based on a uh, basket of other stocks, other currencies, and we're going to call it an SDR, a special drawing, right? And um, we're going to recalibrate how the uh, other currencies are weighted in this new basket, this new SDR. And as the global uh, economy starts to, you know, continues to break apart, we'll say, well, um, because China's actually exporting a lot of stuff and they've got some resources, we'll give them a higher ratio as representation of this SDR because that'll keep them quiet. It's the bankers transcending the nation states they've sucked dry and creating a new uh, 0% fractional reserve banking digital money that will then absorb what's left of sovereignty. Yeah, basically. I mean, one exists already right now. It's called a credit default swap. You know, credit default swap is a global unit of fraud that banks all over the world swap with each other, and they create this back-end unit of currency that they conduct all measure of multi-billion dollar fraud. And they use it as a weapon. It, it's, it's designed to be corrosive. They want to wreck things. Well, it's... Dilutive. I mean, that's the key to it, is that it dilutes the existing equity that you would associate with a unit of currency. Max, and back in one minute. Got a break. Man, I could talk for 10 hours with Max Geyser. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. It's one thing to intellectually know what the New World Order is. A global government for the administrative convenience for central bankers. David Rockefeller, 1991, Evie in France. It is another thing to see it in full practice and to have laptops watching kids at home in their bedrooms and FEMA camps being built and banks stealing trillions and now it's not even news. It's just, oh, you're mad at $150 billion? It's a trillion now. Max Kaiser has agreed to stay with us about five minutes into the next segment. Then George Humphrey will join us midstream, also an economist in his own right, to get his expert take on this. I want to, I'm, I'm holding Max over so we can at least talk to John uh, and Charles, Jacob, Josh, and uh, maybe Mike. But I, I just want to say I've done two hours of radio now and haven't really plugged my films. And that's how we finance ourselves here. We can't just make money out of nothing. We've got to crawl around with little crumbs to try to fund our operation to beat these people. Uh, but if you'll go to InfoWars.com, the online video bookstore, and buy some of the T-shirts, videos, books, materials, they're the best films, best books, You know, not just my work, but the stuff I see that I think is really informative. We carry it at InfoWars.com, whether it's Fall of the Republic, Obama Deception, Police State 4, The Rise of FEMA, such key intelligence, Invisible Empire, New Order Defined, Endgame, Shadow Government. You can also now pre-order it, start shipping out at the end of next week. Uh, you can also now uh, pre-order uh, the uh, new film, Don't Tread on Me, which gets into states' rights and how to take the states back, and uh, Democracy versus Republic. It's such an important film by the makers of Camp FEMA, Gary Franchi and William Lewis. Okay, let's go right back to calls for Max Kaiser. Uh, let's talk to John in Ohio. John, you're on the air. Yeah, uh, I, w I wanted to call you uh, just before the end of the program when you uh, got cut off last week, and then you said call the next day, and then there were no calls. So I'm going to try to relate this to uh, what you're talking about now. Uh, I need prob probably a hundred times more articulateness and a hundred times in a thousand hours to uh, describe all the ways that I disagree with part of your analysis. I think you're progressive in, uh, other, in certain ways and absolutely fascist in other uh, uh, points that I think cancel out much of the good that you're doing. For John, instance, Max Kaiser's on. Do you have a question or comment for him? I, don't, I really don't care what you think of me, John. I appreciate your call, though. Go ahead. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll, I'll ask you a question. Now, you said that... Um, uh, the IMF and the World Bank are, are really the, uh, uh, the, uh, the villains that are really uh, plundering and raping the world. And yet uh, uh, you say uh, that uh, uh, countries like Chavez and Cuba, who are trying their best uh, imperfectly to uh, resist this kind of plunder, uh, uh, are subjected to the, the worst kind of uh, slander by the media. And you say you don't agree with the corporate media, the CI-connected media, yet you pre re repeat exactly those kinds of disinformation. Uh, John, I appreciate your call. The, the, uh, look, Iran is run by thugs at many levels. So is our government. It isn't either Chavez is good or Obama's good. They're both bad. I mean, it's such a child. I'm not saying you're like a child, but that is... Max Kaiser, it's so childlike. I mean, do you have any comments? All I can say is that, you know, I wish times were better because I could give up my gig as Max the Orange Home Gang Gorilla. 
<laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Kaiser, you've always got some ridiculous joke. No. <laughs> time we break to a commercial, you're talking about Max the Orange Gorilla. And I'm thinking to myself, Jesus, you know, that guy's probably making better money than I am. <laughs> oh, all right, Max, we're going to come back in the final segment and go to Charles, Jacob, and Josh and Mike with, 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 with serious questions for Max Kaiser. But we do have to have some gallows humor. But, but seriously, what is this mindset where people think, I've got to be, you know, how can I be against white supremacist and against black supremacist? Well, I'm against all of these racists. Or how can I be against communism, but then I'm against the big banks? I'm against any form of tyranny, and tyranny has a lot of different flavors, doesn't it, Max? Well, this, that's the problem you have, because you are very far-ranging in your uh, look and critics, uh, criticism of things. I focus purely on the banks, markets, and finance, and through that prism, I see things clearly.